start the last session, which is about the conservation of flagship species. And here to talk about it is the session host, Willem, uh, past president of the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines, Willem Van de Ven. Thanks everyone and welcome to the last session. Uh, as in previous sessions, please, please feel free to ask questions in the chat box, either on Facebook Live or here in the Zoom meeting. We will answer the questions when we can, or otherwise afterwards in the Q&A uh, part of the uh, program. Uh, we have several great presentations this afternoon, uh, but all of those people are field workers uh, in conservation, and uh, several of those are in remote areas with terrible internet connections. So. Uh, I hope they are here now, but I'm not sure. Um, Indira, are you here? I think she's having trouble connecting. Um, it's so also I her birthday. And that's what I was going to say. It's also her <laughs> birthday, but we can't wish her a happy birthday if she's not actually here. Let so I'll just start the video that she, uh, yeah. that she sent me, um, and then she should be here by the end of the of the video um, also for comments and questions etc. Hi good afternoon um, I'm tasked this afternoon to quickly talk about the Philippine Cockatoo Conservation Program. I'm Indira Dayang Lacerna Whitman and I'm from the Katala Foundation. As you might have known there are 21 cockatoo species all over the world and most of them are white and bigger than ours and they are mostly found in Indonesia and Australia but distinctly ours is a cockatoo with red vents. Hence, the other name of the Philippine cockatoo is a red vented cockatoo. Locally, it's called katala or agai or abukai. So what does the cockatoo, cockatoo feed on? Yeah, so there are, we have identified around 50 food plants of the Philippine cockatoo. Interestingly, we are part of a study worldwide on trying to correlate occurrence of blood parasites in parrots and consumption of plants with secondary components. So the Philippine cockatoo from this study do not have blood parasites but consume plants with secondary components. For example, the taluto or the Tericymbium tinctorium. So this means that Philippine cockatoos really go out of their way to look for plants with secondary components, probably because of for self-medication. So cockatoos are cavity nesters in tall, large trees uh, in lowland forests. And in most cases, these trees are also equally threatened. So what are these habitats in lowland areas? So these include mangrove forests, uh, coastal forests, coastal or beach forests, riparian forests, and lowland dipterocarp forests. So the Philippine cockatoo, of course, is Philippine endemic, but widely distributed all over the Philippines in the past 30 to 40 years. But as you can see in this map, the highest uh, density of the population, remaining population, is in the island province of Palawan, where we are based uh, at the moment. And we estimate the global population between 810 to 1,230 1, individuals in the wild, and 50% of that global population could be found in our pilot project site, which is Rasa Island, a, coral, a small coral island of only 8 square kilometers. Having said that, the Philippine cockatoo is categorized, categorized as critically endangered, the highest uh, threat status according to the IUCN before getting extinct in the wild. So why is it threatened by the way? So in this slide you can see the bigger the, the letters, of course, the bigger the threat also. And obviously lowland forest loss is the biggest and the major threat of the Philippine cockatoo. So how did we do our conservation comprehensively to achieve what we have uh, achieved little successes in, in the past 20, over 20 years? So since the Philippine cockatoo is a lowland forest specialist and it is always in close proximity with humans, the approach and the strategy that we are using in the Katala Foundation is called what we call ecosystemic 
meaning the whole ecosystem where the Philippine cockatoo lives and also participatory, so community-based. One strategy is creating a protected area and managing these protected areas. You please mind here that our cockatoo reserves or our protected areas are very small and these are only 1.5% of Palawan's land area. But even if they are very small, they uh, house already our cockatoo reserves a very high percentage of other globally threatened species so benefiting from the Philippine cockatoo conservation as shown in this graph in this slide of course research rescue and release is part of our of our um, strategy and I'd like to specifically focus on this little success we have very recently of gold. Uh, uh, gold is a hatchling saved, rescued from starvation in 2016 where there was a long dry months and he was only 60 grams. She was only 60 grams when she was rescued and after rehabilitation she was brought back rescued in May and she was brought back to Dumaran in our project site in August and then through a soft release program she learned training on anti-predator training and was able to adapt to the natural environment and the success is not only about successfully introducing releasing her back into the wild and integrated into the wild population but the real success is that gold bred this year and had one successful healthy hatchling so that's a very nice story to to share the most effective and uh, the main strategy for us is really nest protection or the warden scheme and i think i do not have to read why this is very important and very effective for us and these are i just want to like to mention that these are ex poachers we are training and capacitating and deputizing to become and become wildlife enforcement officers so this is very good because they have the traditional knowledge and skills that we can use now in proper use and they are acknowledged and recognized and not anymore feared as illegal or violators but they are protectors of the environment so this is very successful a successful story for us and integral to our conservation program is what we call the conservation education that is um, rooted from the from pride no from instilling pride among among uh, locals uh, among the local populace so this means that uh, we believe that pride is a powerful emotion that can create a passion for conservation and this conservation education activities we have are always measurable no? so it's not a waste of time and resources because we can at the end of the intervention intervention we are able to measure whether there are changes in the levels of knowledge awareness and even behavioral changes and the most important thing for this also is that we are um, able to to create a culture and what we call the cockatoo conservation culture in the local community with this uh, pride campaign so as again as again i mentioned about creating the conservation cockatoo conservation culture where you have volunteers who will help you and through citizen science and then you are training them and then the data is really coming from them as to how many cockatoos are crossing from the mainland from the island to the mainland or how many cockatoos they have seen for the day in their backyards and these are and the warden scheme is also a form of a citizen science program so our warden scheme is already institutionalized our katala festivals in all project sites are already institutionalized meaning there is a there is a municipal ordinance to create that festival every year so that is very important for us at the end of the day all these efforts create or give you already recognition but that's not the most important the most important is that you have really the population you are working on 
is increasing or not that is the the best indicator of the success of any conservation or any species conservation program whether your population has uh re what do you call that re uh, have have increased so as you can see here see here in the graph our cockatoo population for example in rasa have increased from 23 individuals to now close to 400 individuals on rasa alone all this after 20 years 20 over 20 years of conservation work i would like to share with you our lessons learned no first is important it's the science-based decision making so research is very important as a component of your conservation program so you can you can tell the people but of course you have to translate all these science results all these results of your studies to the people where in, in a way that they can understand so that they can better appreciate the their participation of the conservation work empower them so empowering them is them giving them also the responsibility because it is eventually the humans or the people living in that cockatoo habitat also uh, benefit to the conservation you are doing and cultivate the passion and the commitment and the last one is very important for for us because you cannot have success in two or three years no most ngos if they are not really for long term for long for ready for the long haul then the success would not also be be very uh, evident so you have to be ready you have to have that passion and that commitment and along with that passion and commitment it cannot be possible sorry it cannot be possible also without your long-term commitments or without your long-term uh, partners and sponsors so you have to to be able to establish that partnership as well so since it's a very sh short uh, presentation and time that we are given i hope you can have the time to visit our website and also our facebook page where we have all these activities in this covid pandemic that we are uh, we are changing our strategies from all the education activities community visits and school visits now online like this that we can still um, engage our target audiences our students for example and communities to participate and be able to get something even if you are not on field so i end my presentation with that and i hope there will be questions so that we can uh, Yep. So I thank you very much for listening and I hope uh, really there will be questions after. All right, that was the presentation of uh, Indira and by now she has entered the uh, chat also in the Zoom meeting here. So I'd like to ask everyone if we can all unmute our button, our video for a moment and wish her a happy birthday because it's her birthday today. Happy birthday! 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 Finally, I found my way. Uh, all right. Oh, that creates quite a chaos in the group. I'm going to mute all of you again. <laughs> so that should return some of the quiet. All right.